Thailand, formerly known as Siam, lied in Southeast Asia. To the north, the country is bordered by high mountains. The Manam River forms a plain on which rice is intensively cultivated. Near the mouth of the river lies Bangkok, the capital, the centre of the spiritual and cultural life of some 20 million Thai people. Thailand has undergone many changes during the 20th century. This ancient royal palace, for example, has witnessed the change from absolute monarchy to parliamentary government. In this building, democratically elected governments administer the affairs of a growing nation. Ancient and modern live side by side in Bangkok. Narrow lanes and modern thoroughfares like this. Motor cars and the traditional vehicle, the trichor. The streets and markets are thronged with people. The merchants, their families and customers live modestly but free from want. Many of the city dwellers are of Chinese origin and Chinese immigrants play an important role in the country's economy. Bangkok is the centre of Buddhism in Southeast Asia. This modern statue of Buddha is known as the Great Standing Buddha. The ornate spires of temples and pagodas can be seen in many parts of Thailand. finest craftsmanship and the most precious materials in the construction of the temple. Legendary figures like these giant demons glitter with coloured tiles and precious stones. In Thailand, all men are supposed to spend part of their lives as monks. Dressed in saffron-coloured robes, wherever they go they carry begging bowls or sacks. They are allowed no possessions and must rely on the people for their food. Bangkok is built on the delta of the Menam. Canals called Klong spread throughout the city. They serve as shopping lanes, the merchants selling all manner of goods from their small boats. Some merchants and their families spend their days travelling through the many miles of Klong. The Klongs lead into the main stream of the river, where larger boats transport most of the goods that are moved in Thailand. Whole families live on these larger boats, which serve as both homes and as business places. The rivers are the main highways of Thailand. The larger villages are located along the banks of the river. The houses are built on tall poles, for during the rainy season, between March and October, the rivers will rise several feet and overflow their banks. Many of the villagers are employed in marketing the products of the surrounding forests, but most of them are rice farmers. The 
the rice fields stretch as far as the eye can see. Rice is not only the main food of the people, but much of Thailand's economy is based on it. Unlike other areas of Asia, Thailand produces more rice than the people can eat. Rice can only be grown where there is an abundant supply of water. And because so much land in Thailand is flooded part of the year, rice is the only crop that can be efficiently cultivated. In some places, water must be pumped into the fields from the clock. Many farms have water wheels for this purpose. Some are power operated like this one. The swollen rivers and the rains supply the rice plants with the water they need for growth. Santikanok family are rice farmers. They are returning from the local market, boating along the Klong which flows past their home. Samang and Van Chu, the mother and father, and Chalam, their son, live on a farm that has been owned by the family for many generations. The farmhouse is built on the edge of the rice field. Van Chu sold his last rice crop to buy teak wood to build this new hut. Teak is a very hard and strong wood which doesn't rot in water. Tan Yu and Tan Yen, the daughters of the family, are waiting for them when they arrive home. Each member of the family has his own job to do. Ban Chu made the plough which he carries on his shoulders. It is so made that it will cut a deep furrow even under water. Ban Chu is proud of his strong water buffaloes, without whose help he couldn't farm so successfully. Since he was small, Chalam has taken care of the water buffaloes making sure they spend plenty of time in the water to protect them against heat, for they have no sweat glands. When the fields are ploughed, it is time to plant the rice. Ban Chu and his family plant rice seedlings by hand. The seedlings were grown in a seed bed, and the healthiest plants selected to be planted one by one, each about the same distance apart. In this way, Van Chu ensures that his fields will grow an even and uniform crop. Some farmers broadcast the seeds on the water. This is less work, but the yield will not be as great. At mealtimes, the family often sits on the ground outside their house. Fish adds variety and the necessary protein to their daily diet of rice. In Thailand, many people now use spoons and forks instead of chopsticks. Ban Chu and Chalam often walk through the tall green rice to make sure all is well, for on these fields their lives depend. Throughout the growing season, there is much weeding to be done. When the crop has been harvested, Ban Chu will have several boatloads of rice for sale. 
Mr. Lum can handle a boat nearly as well as his father. But it takes two men to pole the heavy boat down the clong to the main stream. The Banshu's crop will mean money to buy clothes and farm tools. And for the people who are unable to produce all the rice they need, it will mean food. The elevator at the rice mill, whose camouflage reminds us of the last war, receives Banshu's rice and that of many farmers like him who sell their crops to the merchants. At the elevator, the rice is graded and packed for export. then taken by boat to the big merchant vessels in the harbour. This rice will find its way to the markets of India, China, Japan, the West Indies and other countries where it is needed. With the money earned from the sale of rice, Thailand will buy the machines and materials she cannot produce herself. The foundation of Thailand's economy is rice. The people of Thailand, while respectful of their ancient traditions, are adopting modern ideas and skills to ensure their prosperity and freedom.